Back in the autumn of 2022, pretty much around the time of the Cannes Boat Show, Jeannot introduced a new range to its fleet, the DB line. Now that DB stands for day boat, but what they're trying to do with that new DB line was introduce a very stylish, a premium day boat that could also operate as a genuinely private, usable cruiser for you to go away for a week at a time in comfort. Now the first boat we saw in that line was this. That's the DB43. And here in Dusseldorf in January 2023, the second boat in that line is just being introduced and that's called the DB37. Now you can see right from the start that the styling retains that kind of automotive inspiration. You see these uh, swept mouldings at the aft end of the hull there, the hull sides. You also see those very much in evidence on the DB43. Well, on the 43, they're actually used as engine vents. Here, they are in fact nothing but decoration, but it's a, a very nice, very welcome touch. It's certainly a stylish looking piece of equipment. Now, when you step on board, the first thing you notice is how beamy it feels. And that's interesting because it's not actually that beamy a boat. The reason for that is that generally, when you have a hard top, you would have the supporting stanchions coming down on either side of your furniture, on either side of your galley. Outside of that, you'd have external uh, walkways, external side decks. So you wouldn't be making full use of your beam. Well, here, they've extended that hard top right out to the sides so that everything inside of that is usable beam. And it, uh, it really works. It feels very wide, very open, very spacious. And of course, we also have fold down bulwarks on both sides that adds about two meters to the usable beam way aft. So it's a very, very welcoming day space. Now, one other feature of note is the fact that this enormous hardtop has only a very small overhead hatch. I mean, it's hinged at the aft end so that it scoops plenty of air down onto the uh, guys at that three-man helm. But when you look at the sheer scale, of the roof, it seems slightly incongruous that they wouldn't be using it for any additional sunroofs, just to admit a bit of extra natural light and sunshine. And if I sweep myself over, sorry, if I sweep myself over to the 43, it seems even stranger because here, as you can see, it uses the same idea with a big central cockpit space, wide open deck, a huge overhead hard top and then skylights plus a big big sunroof above the helm and I brought this to uh, the attention of the guys here and asked why that might be and they tell me that on this larger model it's able to accommodate much more weight up top so it has much thicker heavier weight stanchions on this smaller model in order to avoid spoiling the aesthetic they didn't want to use massive stanchions to support massive weight. And also, given that the hull is considerably smaller, they didn't want to put too much weight up top and spoil the driving dynamics. So what we have is this. And while it might seem like a slightly strange concept, it's actually really quite practical in a number of ways. The idea behind the design was that you could attach canvases right the way around the back here and also attach canvases at the leading edge here where the side deck elevates a couple of steps towards the bow. So essentially you can shut off this entire space leaving just a zipped door at the forward part of the canvas so that you can easily access the bow if you need to when it's raining. But either way what it does do is create a really enormous cocooned space, a cocooned social day boat in space with a bit of climate control, a bit of diesel heating, a bit of air conditioning. You can see how the concept might have a great deal of merit. Now in its quest for day boat in versatility, Genoa has also factored in a quite an interesting aft end in this cockpit. We have a four-man forward-facing bench aft, a big table in the centre, and then an aft-facing four-man bench ahead of that. As you can see, that's been slid forward on its runners, creating extra space. And the reason for that is that Genoa wanted to give people the chance to orchestrate their sunbathing spaces and their seating spaces independently of one another. So you can rig this bench to face aft, to face forward, 
You can use this as a small sump pad or a big sump pad. And also the fact that this forward bench slides even further forward means that you also beneath this bit of matting, as you can see, there's a hatch just there, it means you get manual access to the engine bay uh, so that if your electrics fail, as in fact they have at this show, you can still get down to that engine bay and to the um, various bits of equipment like your generator and uh, the sea keeper that reside down there. So that makes good sense too. Once we slide that bench back into position, we've got a really generous, really convivial kind of dining area there and it frees up some good space here at the transverse galley. And it's an impressive galley. Uh, we do have a generator on this particular boat, so both the barbecue on the port side and the hob on the starboard side are electric. But generally, this boat would come with a gas barbecue and a gas hob, plus a good size of sink in the center. And we've seen these before on various other uh, boats, but they're very effective and very welcome. They simply pop out whenever you need them and automatically light up and they're frosted so they don't blind you, give a nice ambient light so you can see what you're doing when it gets dusky. We also have some good storage underneath this uh, galley top and good bit of shelving on the right hand side. I think we have a bin in the middle, yeah, and as you would expect a good size of fridge plus a tiny little freezer compartment big enough for a few blocks of ice. Now if we make our way around there and up the steps to the bow space, you'll see that the plumb bow that this boat uses, you can see that very clearly on the neighbouring 43, where this shares that same kind of style. So I move this cushion and lift this up. It creates a tremendous amount of space down below for chain and line. You can fit all kinds in there. Certainly plenty of room for your fenders and so on. Let's just close that back up. There we are. And it also operates as quite a nice uh, two-person aft-facing seat. So you can face the guys lounging on the sun loungers there. Now let's make our way back down the port side and we'll pop down below before we have a closer look at that helm. Because as you come down, what we get is not so much a galley, uh, not even so much a wet bar, it's uh, described by Jeannot as a breakfast station. And that's pretty much what it is. We've got good bits of storage in here, nice pale woods to bounce the light around. We also have a microwave, a little uh, window for natural light and another fridge underneath there with another little freezer compartment. If I turn around and face the starboard side, we have a really generous heads compartment in here too. Excellent light from a pair of windows, two opening portholes too, so plenty of ventilation, more of this lovely light wood, and good headroom as you can see above me here. And it's gotta be, I reckon, six foot six, six foot seven and a separate shower compartment behind there. So it's much more than the uh, kind of wet room you might expect on a, a day boat centric weekender. As I say, it might be a day boat, it might be called a day boat, the DB37, but it's designed very much to operate as a proper cruiser that you could take away for a week or more with your family. And in terms of its provision of heads and shower facilities, it certainly backs that up. And let's swing round to left and look ahead to the via the bow. Now that's the, uh, that's the master cabin. The moment you walk in, if I put the camera at eye line, you look around and you think, my goodness, shouldn't there be some windows here? Maybe a, uh, a letter slot window there and another one in that forward molding. This is the, uh, this is the sunbathing pad on the foredeck above us. So it wouldn't take much in the way of ingenuity to create uh, a little window there just to admit a bit more natural light. And it's not until you get down to the lower level that you see we have really good hole windows there built in which are very lovely. We also have uh, integrated 
lines, although they don't seem to function very well on this particular boat. You lift them up and they simply come straight down again, so there's a bit of a problem there. And it's a shame because those windows really are generous. And actually, while I think about it, the DB43 does have a window in that section, so it'd be good to see that replicated here on the 37. I see no good reason why it shouldn't be. We have additional uh, storage on both sides here. Uh, and if I move the door out of the way, you'll see that we have some generous hanging storage as well on the port side, which is always very welcome. But I would argue, actually, that the best part of the lower deck uh, is the mid-cabin. If we swing round slightly to the starboard side and drop ourselves down, I mean, from this perspective, it doesn't look like much, does it? Uh, you don't expect a great deal. But you come down here, drop down, and it's actually really quite a size. And there's plenty of headroom for you to sit up in bed, read a book, take it easy. There's real, really good clearance above your head, maybe uh, eight or nine inches. Again, there's plenty of storage on both sides and good hole windows. I mean, I'm actually so impressed by this space that I might be inclined to use it as a master cabin if I were the owner of the boat, because it's so spacious. You could easily uh, sleep transverse. And for me, one of the clever parts about this cabin is the fact that it gives you little elements of extra headroom where you can actually uh, get yourself up a little higher and change without knocking your elbows or banging your head. Because this, this part with the open in porthole, that actually takes advantage of the mouldings in the helm seat base just behind the uh, that transverse galley. And it works a treat. And it's pop straight back up to that helm and have another look at that. Now, this central helm station for three, because of the weight of that roof, we have some central bars to uh, hold it up, give you a bit of extra support, but they in no way um, obstruct you or get in the way. Each of these seats comes with armrests and a bolster. It all come, also comes with a fore and aft adjustment, uh, but there's not a great deal of wiggle room, if I'm absolutely honest. And as a fairly moderately sized bloke of six foot, when I stand myself in this spot, um, jamming my feet against the console mouldings and my backside up here against the cushion, uh, I feel the need for a little extra space. But really, with this foot brace built into the console, what they anticipate you're doing is adopting the seating position, I think. Plonking your bum down on there and your feet down on there and your hands fall naturally on the wheel. And that is a much more pleasant place to be. But I have to say that these headrests, I guess that's what they are, they jut out and they dig you in the, uh, towards the top of the back between the shoulder blades and kind of cause you to hunch over a bit. They're peculiarly uncomfortable. And this is a prototype boat. This is uh, boat number one, so it's not entirely refined yet. But I did pop onto the 43 to check out the helm seats on there and discovered that they're identical. So chances are, this is what you're gonna get on the production models. If it were me, I would invest some money in changing those for something more comfortable. That said, the helm position is quite attractive. There's really very decent visibility all round. All the instruments are very clearly legible. The only thing I might change would be the position of the trim tabs, because as you reach for them and you have to dip your fingers down over the other side, you find your forearm quite naturally pushing on the throttles, which is not what you want when you're trying to operate your tabs. So if we could instead install the tabs somewhere behind the throttles here, that seems to me a lot more intuitive. Uh, but as I say, it's boat number one, and as boat number one helm ergonomics go, this is a pretty good job. In terms of performance, you can opt for the twin D4320s that the showboat has for performance of around 36 knots, or you can go for the outboard version, 
which comes with twin Yamaha 425 horsepower XTOs for around about 38 to 39 knots. Now, of course, engine choice aside, one of the other key considerations, as with uh, any boat, is price. And as things stand, nobody here is yet willing to guess at what the production models might set you back. But I think, given that they describe it as a premium day boat and compare it directly to the likes of Pardo, it's reasonable to assume it might be a little bit more expensive than fans of Genoa might have expected in the past. That said, this design seems to be tapping into a nerve at the moment. The idea that you can take a really stylish, premium feeling day boat for 10 or 11 people and also enjoy proper accommodation, two separate cabins and a proper heads compartment for week-long cruises with your family. That's something that people are after. They want that kind of versatility. And this certainly appears to provide that.